Okay, well, malaria is, uh, is, is caught, if you like, uh, from the bite of a, of a mosquito, and so an Anopheles mosquito. And that, um, that is sort of injects, if you like, the parasite into, into our bloodstream. And the parasite then finds its way first into our liver and where it grows in the liver. Um, but we don't suffer from malaria at that point. Um, at that point, um, it just sort of grows and, uh, and there's, no, uh, there's no adverse effect on the person. But then it bursts out of the liver, um, thousands, millions of these parasites into our bloodstream. And in our bloodstream, that's where the parasite then invades a type of cell which is in our blood, which carries oxygen around our blood. It's called a red blood cell. And our bloodstream is packed with these cells. The parasites enter that red blood cell and, uh, and they grow in that red blood cell and they multiply and they burst out and they invade other red blood cells and they grow and they multiply and they burst out in this cycle that takes around about two days. And that's when you get the symptoms of malaria. And so that's when you, the, the, the problems start. It's probably fair to say, just to, just to take up from that other point, it's probably fair to say that, that amongst those people that are suffering from malaria are the poorest people in the world. And about um, a third of the population is at risk of getting malaria. About uh, 500 million people have malaria at any one time. And it kills around about a million people a year, mostly children, mostly the vulnerable. But a huge number of people are affected and it causes them to feel, if they don't die of course of the disease, it, it causes them to feel unwell and, uh, and it reduces their, their ability to, to, to work and to feed their family and these sorts of things. The research group here in the, uh, in the toxicology unit have been working with, uh, with a group in the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine um, as well as other collaborators around the world to understand the, the basic processes, the fundamental processes that the parasite needs to survive in our red blood cells. And so if we could understand those basic processes, then we can understand what it is that allows the parasite at a biochemical level to live in our red blood cells. And if we could understand that, then of course we can raise drugs, inhibitors to those essential pathways that would kill the parasite. The process that we're looking at more precisely is a biochemical process called protein phosphorylation. Protein phosphorylation we've defined as being essential for the parasite to survive. And that process, if you like, that biochemical process of protein phosphorylation is dependent upon a group of proteins called protein kinases. And we've come to understand that a protein kinase called protein kinase G, PKG, is essential to keep the parasite alive. So by drilling down in these biochemical processes, understanding the molecular details of these processes, and in particular, the actual proteins themselves, like protein kinase G, we can then define what they call a target, if you like, for drugs, for the next generation of drugs, which will inhibit those specific proteins and protein kinase G precisely, and will kill the parasite. We're going to go after a drug in this area by working together with big pharmaceutical companies such as GlaxoSmithKline, for example, such as uh, foundations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, such as Medicines for Malaria Venture, and other charities and academic bodies to look for drugs that target these specific processes. And so those drugs, they can take many years to generate, not just because we need a drug which is effective against the parasite itself, but also we need a drug which is safe to give to pregnant women and to children as well as to adults as well. So the drug has to be extremely safe and extremely effective, extremely efficacious as we would call it.